Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's 5 minute healer tip is going to be about healer companions. I recently did a video about the dedicated squire and if Indom runestones still affect its healing. We did come to the conclusion that it does affect one ability but not the other. It is still a good healing companion to use. What I'm going to show you today is just other alternatives that you can also use. And I might have found one that I like better. But before we get into that, I just wanted to thank everyone for that continuing support that you've been giving me. Sometimes I might make a video that doesn't pertain to you or you might already know about it and it's old news to you. I just want to let you know that I'm doing this not just for, you know, old players, but definitely for new players, players that are just coming to the game and they're just wanting to learn what could they use, especially when they're looking for alternatives for expensive items in the game um, and just things like that. So I do truly appreciate everyone for helping out, giving advice in the comments. Just know that a lot of this stuff might not pertain to you or or might already be something you already know. So I do apologize for that, but someone out there that's starting the game doesn't know, and this could be very helpful for them. If you're looking for a healer companion, or maybe you've just gotten a random companion out of a chest, out of a June bag, you might find out today that it is very useful as a healer. One healer that I thought was actually really fantastic was the Dread Warrior. Again, this could be old news to people, but the Dread Warrior actually has some pretty cool powers here. The first power that catches my eye is the Siphon Strike. It deals damage over time to target, foe, and heals allies near the target and increases the power of their attacks by 5,000. So that gives you 5,000 power if you are undercapped on your rating. That's a benefit. Um, and also heals. And the heals are really good. In my opinion, I think they're good. I'm not sure if they tick faster than the dedicated Squire Smite heal does, but it is affected by Indom runestones. So it feels like he heals more in the end. He does heal more. It feels like it. Mind you, I am sitting here on console. I do not have these companions on PC to test it on any logs. So I do apologize that I am telling you a feels like it rather than actual numbers. Someone might be able to go and do the numbers elsewhere or maybe have done them already. But sometimes when patch notes happen and things change, some of these things can become more powerful. And for some reason, the Dread Warrior feels very strong. And this siphon strike in my opinion is really nice and it heals really well the other one is warrior's thirst but it says 10 percent increased damage i see here it gives actually another 5,000 power so it's not working as intended um, it's supposed to give a damage increase but it gives just more power rating so you're getting 10k power rating from this guy alone the dread warrior but what i really liked about him is that his heals do proc off of the Indom rune stones, so he is getting a bonus to his healing, and I felt like he heals really well. So if you don't have the dedicated squire, or if you're wanting to try out the dread warrior, give it a shot. He's a pretty cool guy. Some other companions that I have tested, I haven't tested all of them that I have, um, but some of the ones that I have tested here, the Liland, it does work with the Indom runestones, but she has low magnitude heals, even though she heals really fast, her ma magnitudes are pretty small, um, but her audio drain is affected. All of her healing is affected by Indom runestones, so if you have some account bound Indom runestones that you're trying to use, you're trying to use it on a healer that it's actually effective on, use one of them. The Stronghold Cleric also is affected by Indom Runestones, so he will give more healing as well. It's another one that's on the Zen market. You may already have it, you may not, but I did test them out just because I did have them available already. Celeste as well works off of Indom Runestones. Her healing is increased. 
But Celeste has a very slow healing. I don't mind her damage so much. I mean, she shoots the enemies up in the air um, and she does a good amount of damage. Not a lot, mind you. Don't put her on for damage. But um, she, her healing is high, high magnitudes. But again, and that's the trade-off. She's a slower casting healer. I wouldn't recommend you using her. Okay, so the Helmite Paladin Ghost also works with Indoms. Um, but the only thing is you got to be hitting to see the healing, which is fine. A lot of the times, it's kind of nice to have a a healer that's just going to do the work for you but this guy is really good for trials a lot of people have used him in boss fights and trials I mean, he does good healing and he works with indom rune stones but it can feel a pretty slow at times um, but his abilities do work off of it as well so that's just another one that you can look out for and again, the Dedicated Squire. Half of it works off of the indom rune stone bonus and half of it doesn't. So if you're looking to get a healing companion and everyone is telling you dedicated squire i'm not going to recommend you get him because i mean at the end of the day we might be talking about healing companions but you really do want to always try and shoot for a debuff companion if you can like the spined devil or you could go with the stalwart golden lion that's another option as well those two are really great but you have some pretty good options here right now as far as the healers go i mean i might say that the dread between the dread warrior and the dedicated squire they're both great healers so if you have one or the other throw it on the squire did get nerfed but his healing feels just fine it doesn't feel like his healing got nerfed at all but his damage did which is like not anything that we should be worrying about so much um but the healing side of it it's still good. Only thing that you can't use with him is Indom Rune Stones, really, unless you're trying to um, just buff up his cleansing heal. But sometimes you won't even be utilizing the cleansing heal for it to proc. If you're wanting to actually utilize Indom Rune Stones, the Dread Warrior is going to be a better option because he actually works with the Indom Rune Stones. And then again, like I said, the Liland, the Stronghold Cleric, Celeste, and the Helmite Paladin Ghost. If you have any of those, those also work with Indom Rune Stones as well. If there are any other healing companions that you would like to see tested, just let me know in the comments below. I'll give it a shot if I have the companion. Again, I am on console today because I have all of the companions that I've been looking to test. There's a few more on my list that I felt like already were pretty underwhelming companions in general, so I didn't feel that there was really any need to actually test them yet, but I want to give all of the companions a good shot. None of this is going to do with damage at all. If you were looking for DPS companions and which ones are the best, I never look for that, so I can't really guide you in the right direction when it comes to DPS companions. But as far as healing companions go and debuff companions go, I'd be happy to test any of that for you because since I do main the cleric, I do have a lot of those companions that you might be interested in checking out. Oh, and before I leave today, guys, I wanted to give you guys a little tip on making some potential profit. I was going to make some videos about making money, but I think that's a very soft spot for a lot of people and they get very sensitive about you giving out their secrets. So maybe I'll slide in a little profit secret at the end of my videos and you know, the people that want to watch will find out at the end and it'll be something really cool and Easter eggy. I don't know if that even makes any sense, but I'm going to let you know that sometimes people say that master crafting is really the way to make money, but maybe they are right. Maybe selling to master crafters is the way to make money. Resources and materials are required and sometimes master crafters or people interested in getting into it might have to purchase those things from you. There are some things like right here in the stronghold that you can only get with guild marks or they have to be crafted in the actual profession workshop. So therefore still causing them to either spend guild marks, spend AD or spend time building the resource. So a lot of the times people resort to the easiest method and that is spending the AD that they might have. You know, that tends to be how things work is you don't really want to wait. You want to get things done really fast. It's not many people that I've met that have very much patience. Even though on MMOs it really pays back to be patient, you're going to find those people that might buy some things from you. And this situation is no different. So we are in a double professions event right now as we speak. And that means that a lot of the resources are going to be purchased very frequently in order for people to craft their items. Things in the stronghold that can sell for a good amount, such as Red Rouge, a thousand gill marks. If you don't spend a lot of gill marks, it doesn't hurt. 
over here. And I mean, this is just my stronghold. Your stronghold might have something different. Uh, potash here, all of these items you can look up and see what they sell for. If you're willing to spend the money on that stuff, you can sell that just for a little bit of side cash. So Red Rouge here is going for 474 at a stack of 25. That is a roughly 19K per Red Rouge that you purchase. So if you're looking to just spend a little bit of extra on the side, uh, Guild Marks, you can sell these items. It's not such a bad idea. If you want to save your Guild Marks, of course, don't do that. But um, Potash here is 12K each as well. You could approach this how you like. Just make sure that you look into this. Maybe there's something that you can make money on or you can sell to a master crafter or maybe something that you can craft on your end by getting some of these items. Again, also, if you do pan over to the other tab, there's other things that you can purchase, but it's going to require you to have more stuff. And I wouldn't dive too deep into it unless you are like a pro master crafter or you're really interested in getting into it. Yeah, that's just a little side tip for you guys. I just wanted to sneak that in there. Maybe somebody can find some use in it. You're welcome.